Okay, we're heading to uh, New York to the one show to see um, Jerry Delafamina launch his new book. We're here at the uh, New York Waterway. I'm here with uh, Steve Longo and Bernie Zlatnik. the captain sitting in his little chair over there and guiding the ship into Midtown Port on 39th Street. There you go. Look at that aircraft carrier. You were on an aircraft carrier, Steve. Yep. Imagine that. 5,000 people on that thing. It's like a floating city. Look at that, huh? Only the ship I was on was a lot larger than that. Here we are at the Art Directors Club of New York, and Bernie's going to get us in. Here's the latest one. Annual. So All put right. A DVD in it this are you time? in it? No. What the hell's on oh, there? There it is. In the back. We have all the no, no, I don't have anything. It's no. the merchandising cabinet. And then all the posters for the call for entries. That's a cute one. I like that. Beautiful. Love it. I'm here at the New York Art Directors Club, and I just got mugged with ice water by Max. Beautiful he thing. Puts everything on YouTube. He does. Yeah, he, uh, he goes to restaurants. So wonderful thing. And, and and ice water food, too, because it's 93 degrees outside. I saw a dog chase a squirrel. They were both walking. We're here on uh, 26th Street and Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, and we're getting ready to interview this naked man. And he's naked, and he's just hanging here on the street. Here we are at the One Club. Here we are at the book signing, and everybody's waiting around for Jerry to show up. Even the old timers here. All these guys had hair when Jerry I just walked in and now he's cajoling everybody to buy his book. But nobody's nobody's moving on that right now. They're waiting for him to give it away. Sign. There's Jerry. Jerry meeting Steve. And Jerry meeting Harvey. Nice to meet you. I didn't want to shake your uh, your thing there. So you're gonna have a good night tonight? Survive. That's what I know. Very good night. My wife says she's going to pay money just to watch me trying to read. <laughs> <laughs> now, is your book still relevant to the young kids today? Not really. I think it's about another time. You know, it really is. Uh, it's fun to read about another time. The Mad Men was about another time. But, uh, I think the business is so different now that there's nothing that they're going to pick up from it and say, "Oh, gee, wow." I can't wait to go into the business. I lot of people went into the business because of the Mad Men, but they're all now here at this age. <laughs> Mad Men is playing. They got the uh, next installment of Mad Men. Then Jerry read from his book. Let's see what he does. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really from the introduction, which wasn't in the original book. It starts about the Mad Men, and it really starts by saying, the original Mad Men are all dead. Ironically, they died from consuming the products they sold with such gusto. Their lungs went from the cigarettes they sold and smoked by the carton. Their livers melted from all the scotch, gin, and vodka they made famous, and the three martini lunches they enjoyed in the process. I wrote from those wonderful folks who brought you Pearl Harbor in 1970. What you were about to read is a candid inside look at a wild period in the business, a new era of Mad Men that we'll never, we'll never see again. I came into the advertising business in 1952 at the age of 16 as a delivery boy for a stuffy old line advertising agency named Rudolph and Ryan, which could have served as a setting for Mad Men uh, without even moving the desk. Needless to say, it was a different business to break into, especially for a teenager with a limited education. Everybody thinks we're doing well. And he said, Do you want to take our last 
shoot. I said, yeah, there was a restaurant called La Toile, and really it's a fancy restaurant. So we threw this party, and it was an incredible party. We invited everyone from advertising to come. The place was packed, and people were coming in. It was just wonderful. And, and at one point, I was looking at some food, and Ron said to me, don't eat that. We may need that tomorrow. <laughs> um, and uh, we got three accounts from that party. We got three accounts because people thought we were successful. And that's sort of, you know, the moral of the story is, you know, if you can't be successful, at least look successful. Uh, and uh, it, it saved the agency. And Ron, at one point, said, how, how did you do that? And I said, I remember years ago, there was a Broadway show, and there was a showman named Mike Todd. And Mike Todd was a great showman, but his show was going out of business, and he was going to lose a lot of money. He had to last at least a few more weeks. And Mike Todd uh, hired this old show, an old show, show girl, and she had arthritis. And she said, I can't, I won't be able to give change. He said, no, I want you in the box office. So she was in the box office trying to give change. And one person would come to the box office and she would slowly count out the change. <laughs> and two people, and then three, and then there were five people waiting. and then. And by the time the first person got taken care of, there was maybe 10 people waiting. And then by the time the second was taken care of, there were maybe 12 people. And Walter Winchell, a columnist, wrote, they're lining up around the block to see <laughs> my Todd's new show. And that was true. And that's what inspired me to throw this party. That saved our, our assets. I do love it. Most people say this is a terrible business. They throw up their hands and go home to ride at night and forget about it. There are ugly people in advertising, real charlatans, but there are good people too, and good advertising. And I honestly believe that advertising is the most fun you can have with your clothes on.